safe streets, vibrant neighborhoods, successful business and commerce. These are things that make a healthy community. We are a diverse community, rural, suburban, urban, a multitude of languages and ethnicities, ages and experiences. We are a collaborative community. Public-private partnerships make us a model community that others want to follow. It is what makes us unique. It is what makes us strong. The employees of Kent County reflect our diversity and seek to serve our communities. People in this county, in this area, we wrap our arms around each other. We come together to collaborate, to solve problems. Um, we're all working for the good of the whole. And I think that's wonderful. And you can see it. You can see it as you drive around Kent County. Our impact starts the day a baby is born and a birth certificate is issued to protecting children from deadly diseases through vaccination, to the public safety and justice provided by law enforcement and the courts, to offering veterans services and caring for the elderly. Every day we work to keep our communities robust. I think if you are somebody who is interested in serving your community, in building a strong knowledge base and a good group of people to work with, then the county is one of your best employment opportunities out there. It's been completely rewarding in every way I could possibly explain for 26 years and I feel like I grow every single day still today. Leading these dedicated employees are 19 member Board of Commissioners and our County Administrator Controller, along with our elected officials and appointed department directors, placing emphasis on civic involvement, quality housing, vibrant neighborhoods, and strong, solid infrastructure to allow businesses to thrive. Professional, dedicated, collaborative, and innovative. Behind the scenes, collaboration between foundations, charitable organizations, nonprofits, for-profit businesses, public sector demonstrated through the county, the city of Grand Rapids, the townships, all the cities and the villages in our area. If we don't come together, then we will not have the strength that we have today, and I only hope to build upon that. Our aim is to make our communities the best they can be. We are involved in exciting development projects, sustainable recycling programs, and creative progressive prevention programming. We partner with elected officials, impacting policy ideas that become great achievements. We seek opportunities to reach out into the community and offer our services to help our residents make Kent County thrive. Our relationship um, is solid, um, both from a staff standpoint at the county level, as well as the Board of Commissioners. And um, they understand what we do and the benefits that we can do for the community. And vice versa, we couldn't do what we do without the help of Kent County. While most of us are busy running our lives, Kent County's elected officials, administrator controller, and over 1,600 employees are serving the communities where we live our lives, so we can all have a place we are proud to call home. Kent County, it's life well run. Meeting. Today's date is Thursday, August 23rd, 2018, and our time is 8.30 a.m. We'll begin today with our roll call. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioners Antor. Here. Vice Chair Bolter. Here. Commissioners Breeby. Here. Bolkowski. Hennessy. Here. Jones. Here. Coleman. Corndike. Present. Mast. Melton. Present. Morgan. Here. Ponstein. Here. Skaggs. Here. Steck. Here. Talon. Here. Bump. Here. Voorhees. Present. Womack. Present. Chair Salfeld. Here. Mr. Chair, you have 16 members present, three absent. You have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We will then move to agenda items number three and four, and I will call on Commissioner Steck. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So if you hadn't noticed, uh, we are uh, devolving into what we call our season of discord. That's an election cycle for most of us. <laughs> um, which is our national opportunity to essentially demonize and uh, ridicule whoever doesn't agree with us. And that tends to be the uh, predominant theme nowadays. So for our invocation this morning, I would like to uh, to engage in a prayer of reconciliation. So please join me. 
Dear Lord God, we praise you as our creator. We acknowledge that you have infused all things and all people with your divine character. We acknowledge that you have created each of us to be unique and diverse. Different sexes, different races, different ethnicities, different cultures, and even different sizes and shapes. And in all that uniqueness and diversity, you reflect your divine character. Yet while our uniqueness and diversity is a gift from you, we confess that we have all too often distorted that gift. We have used our own differences as an excuse to abuse, to discriminate, to blame, and to even elevate ourselves over others. And so as you have reconciled your creation, convict us of our need to be reconciled to each other. Not to eliminate our uniqueness or our diversity or even the differences we have in perspective, but to live in your calling to humbly and thoughtfully respect and embrace all people as equally created in your image. In all of our complexities in this world, we ask for clarity. We ask for wisdom where there is folly. We ask and pray for understanding where there is misunderstanding. And we pray for humility where there is excessive pride. Most of all, we pray for our country, for our state, for our county, and our communities. We ask that you bring peace, respect, understanding, and reconciliation across the full breadth of our world. We pray this in the name of he who has reconciled us to you. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Stack. We will then move to agenda item number five. We have one special order of business this morning, and I would call on Lance Werner to come forward and present on behalf of the Kent District Library. Or somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I'm Penny Weller, and I chair the Kent District Library Wonderful. Board of Trustees. Um, Lance, can you okay. Because I have I want to tell you that this year has been just a fantastic year for KDL. Um, it all started early in the year when we were notified that um, Lance was going to be the Library Journal's um, Librarian of the Year. The biggest, the biggest honor that a library director can receive, and he is the first librarian in Michigan to get this award. Um, needless to say, we are so proud of him. Um, just, it's, it's just an amazing, amazing award, and um, it's, it just shines so much light on, on our library and the wonderful I just want to tell you about a couple of the a couple of the things that we're doing. We're doing so many different things, but two of the things that are really special to me. Um, one is our bookmobile, and early in August, um, you will see a brand new KDL bookmobile around the roads in Kent County. Um, this is a special bookmobile. We'll be visiting mostly um, preschool areas and senior citizens areas. Areas where the underserved people in Kent County can't always get to a library, and um, this, this bookmobile is going to rock. Uh, in the morning, before hitting the road, we'll be, we'll be loading books onto the bookmobile that will fit the, the people that are going to use that bookmobile. If we're going to a preschool in the morning, we'll be loading books on the little little people will enjoy reading. Um, when we go to a senior citizen center um, on another day, we'll be loading that book with, that bookmobile with books that are specifically things that seniors would like to read. Um, we'll be having large print books available so that those of us that can't see so well will also be able to read. Um, and this is, this is a, this is a, just another way that we're reaching out to people that we can't always get libraries. We're also actively working on the reading scores of um, K through 3 in, 
in Kent County. As you know, Michigan ranks 41st in third grade readers that are not reading to their to the grade level. Um, it's it's just a really it's a tragic thing that we haven't we haven't gotten that that raise, but we're working to it to raise it. Um, we're partnering with the Literacy Center. Um, ISD partnerships supporting parents and families. Our goal is to help support teachers and parents and students by providing resources for that support. Um, in November last year, all of our librarians through all 19 branches of Kent District Library received extensive training on what third graders need to improve their reading skills. Um, and that training was conducted by the counselors at KISD's Early Literacy Coaches. Um, if parents have a child who is struggling, um, they can go to any librarian in any one of our libraries, and we're also partnering with Grand Rapids Public Library on this, so they can go to any library in Kent County and be directed toward books that will help improve their child's reading skills. We're working to create a literacy-based kit in our library so that when parents come into the library, they can work with their children with these kits. And we are also building kits that they can take home and work with their children at home. The fact is that when parents work with their children, as well as when the school, the teachers work with their children, parents are far more impactful on that, on that child's education. Um, going to help parents that are busy anyway, um, help in, in, to engage them with their, with their children's reading. Um, we also are working on a county-wide reading incentive program for K through 3. It's called um, Mission Read, 1,000 Days of Reading. This program is designed to help kids establish that read every, read every day habit. We're also, at Kent District Library, we're working to develop volunteer programs that will pair volunteers with children that just need that little extra help to bring them. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, Lance, and congratulations morning, on uh, that great award. Yeah, the whole uh, personal award is kind of weird. Um, <laughs> I got to say that, you know, what's true is <clears throat> I'm a public servant, and I feel blessed to have the ability to spend my life serving people and trying to help them be the best version of themselves. And what we do at KDL is a team sport, and the award really belongs to everybody. I'm just one gear in a big machine. Um, but I'm so proud of the work that we do, and, and I want to thank you for your support and friendship. Um, and what we do wouldn't be possible without having you as part of the family. 2017 was a great year for us. Um, <clears throat> we were the busiest library in the state. We had over 8 million circulations. We had uh, two, over 260,000 people at our uh, programs. And we had 2.8 million visitors that came into the library. Or, Visited us, visited us through outreach programs. We are the broadband provider in the north part of the county, in the rural areas where people don't have access to that service. We provide Wi-Fi hotspots and devices that enable them to access things that a lot of people of us take for granted in areas that do have Wi-Fi. Um, we opened uh, the Kellogg'sville branch in Kellogg'sville High School. And one thing that's true about that area is that uh, over 80% of the kids there are on free and reduced lunch. And when summertime comes, it's a tough time. So what we decided to do was to partner with Feeding America to make sure that those kids had full stomachs. Because we know kids that have full stomachs are ready to learn. And kids that are hungry are not. They're worried about getting something to eat, as you might expect. And so we really want to thank Feeding America for being our partner. And that was a really popular program. I'm happy to announce that we... Um, we circulated almost 75,000 items to people with vision issues uh, through our library services for the blind physically handicapped. And uh, we are committed to lifting everybody up. And we're happy 
to announce too that we have a military card for active duty personnel and their families and veterans as well. So it's a way to say thank you for everyone's service to the country. Um, it's, it's the least we can do. Thrilled to be able to do that. I want to thank you again for everything and for your support <coughs> and your friendship. And I want to say it, it is certainly an honor to serve the public in Kent County and to have an opportunity to make Kent County everything that it can be. And we're, we're damn proud to be West Michiganders. And I'm happy to answer your questions. Great, thank you, Lance. Uh, we'll next answer questions of Vice Chair Bolter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, because broadband is an issue, can the libraries c partner with other groups to kind of help you know, increase that access and into the rural areas? I have some areas in my district that are still you know, even in, actually, even in Cascade, still having um, broadband access issues. Well, I, um, those, uh, you probably should call me directly, and uh, we can talk about that more. I know that they, we have made efforts to reach out to others, and with limited success. Okay. I just mean, can, could, could, could we think outside the box and partner maybe with communications companies mm -hmm. and various groups to kind of try to get that effort, get grants and draw down grants to try to help that statewide. Yeah, well, I, what we're hoping to do is, is um, we, and we have had some of those conversations, we'll have more, we're constantly exploring okay. how we can provide more service without increasing our price point, because it's not cheap. We have over 200 <coughs> Wi-Fi hotspots that circulate for a month at a time. Um, but what we would like to do is set up a kind of a, a new model that could be replicated in other parts of the state, because the fact of the matter is, is that if you get north of 14 mile in this county and pretty much north of 14 mile around the state until you get up to Traverse City, it's pretty skimpy up there with respect to broadband. There's so many things now that are done electronically that not having access to broadband and access to technology is crippling. Um, so what we're hoping to do here is to set up a new model. The same thing's true. We've uh, worked with the Secretary of State and the County Clerk and the Clerks Association to find people to work polls. Um, it's a great volunteer opportunity. It's an incredibly important civic duty. And uh, we have a lot of folks that are excited to do it, and we put them through the training, and uh, it's the least that we can do. We, our, what we do at KDL is to identify societal problems that we're well positioned to deal with, and then we work on dealing with them. Um, we want to transform people's lives and make Kent County everything it can be. Sorry, it's my very meandering answer to your very uh, uh, short question. Commissioner Melton. Thank you, Chair. Just a word of support. Um, when my granddaughter turned two, her almost four-year-old brother decided that the best celebration they could have for her was for them to go to the library. And, <laughs> mom has had something to do with it but it is once they're there they are welcome they are welcomed and uh, they, there's so many things that are set out for for kids so um, thank you from a grandparent who just beams when my kids say that's how I'd like to spend my birthday thank you so much for sharing that what's true is that every kid in Kent County is our kid too and uh, I'm so happy to hear that and uh, that's what it's all about Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Chair. Lance, just a few things. I'd like to have you take a moment and share how the summer reading program went that KDL does mm -hmm. for both adults and children. And then what you have been doing, you have that whole bicycle piece. Oh, yes. Which I think is worth uh, just mentioning and highlighting. So if you could hit those two topics, because as you know, I'm a regular user of KDL at a variety of different branches, and I think it's a huge asset and gem for our community. But I think those two programs really stand out to me. Summer reading is hugely important, um, <clears throat> especially for kids, because it helps reduce the summer slide. And in the old days, we would uh, spend more time counting people that signed up, which is different than now. Now we count people that have completed <coughs> And it's uh, our, our number of completers this year over last year has increased dramatically. I think um, we were up to, I want to say, 17,000. I'd have to check the numbers in the book. I haven't recently looked at them. 
but we're seeing more and more people complete um, summer reading. So it's, it's not just enough to sign up and then you're done. You don't get the benefit of the program unless you are actually engaged in it. And so um, we've noticed that both adults and kids, more people are signing up. A lot of it has to do with, and it's a good family activity, a lot of it has to do with um, we have kind of fun prizes. So everybody likes to get in on that action and we make it fun. We are easily the most successful and busiest summer reading library program in, in Michigan, if not the Midwest. Uh, we get more people involved than anywhere. A lot of the schools are our partners and help keep kids engaged. So you're going to just see that grow and grow and grow. It's extremely important to us. And it's something, like I said before, we can do to reduce the summer slide. And the bicycles um, are still very popular. You know, Kent County is a very fit place. Uh, you wouldn't know it looking at me. I happen to like beer and bacon. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're going great guns and we're going to continue to see bicycles at our branches. Um, we're starting to look at some of the branches um, for uh, possible kayak uh, applications. We have kayaks available. Um, you know, check it out the library. You can check out a kayak. I mean, why wouldn't you do that, right? <laughs> and who knows what's next? I'm a fisherman. Maybe we'll have fishing rods somewhere at some point. Um, but we just like to provide things that people want that make them happy. And uh, the, the, the things that we offer that aren't text, you know, can, traditional things are along those lines. We have GoPros available. We have ukuleles. You ever want to jam out, you know? <laughs> make a big weekend? I don't know. Thanks. But, uh, yeah. If you want to make popular. them happy, you should have beer and bacon. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do, have, we do have a beer program. We have, we have a bacon program. Uh, Holy smokes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> <clears throat> Commissioner Ponstein. Thank you, Chair Saulfeld. Lance, congratulations on your award. Thank you. I want to back up to the bookmobile. How are the books gotten to to the truck? Are they donated books or the ones you purchased? The ones the we book? purchased. Okay. So when the bookmobile rolls up, they're checking it out, or are you are we getting? No, they're checking books out. And <clears throat> what Penny was describing is we understood and are acutely aware that. You can't have a one-size-fits-all collection in the bookmobile. So we had the bookmobile designed in a special way that it, instead of having traditional shelves all over the inside of it, there'll be some, but not many. There'll be more carts that we can preload with different types of materials. So as Penny said, if we were going to a school, we would have more you know, age-appropriate materials for kids in the school. If we were going to a retirement center, we would have you know, things that were more appealing to retirees and large print, or if we were going to an area that, that was, uh, you know, large uh, Latino population, we would have more, you know, items in Spanish. We could tailor our collection that way. But we buy um, those materials, and we check them out there. We plan on also trying to circulate iPads through the bookmobile, and uh, we really want to not only be engaged with the schools, but also recognize that there are a lot of places in the north part of the county that transportation's an issue, and you know, it's the whole, you know, sometimes you gotta bring the mountain to the person, you can't expect the person to come to the mountain. Um, and then we're committed to that. We really feel that, you know, convenience is king, and we need to meet people on our own terms. Very excited to have that. And it wouldn't be possible without that grant from the Steelcase Foundation, too, by the way. And we also have another grant from the Fry Foundation to help us subsidize the cost of collections. So it's a community effort. Thank you, Commissioner Talon. Thank you, Chair. I'll add my accolades to those already offered. Um, great work and great numbers in the, um, the fact book. One thing I wanted to ask if you could um, offer some perspective on it looks like, I recognize it's not um, audited financial information, but it looks like about a $3.2 million surplus in uh -huh. 2017. What, what, do you, what are your plans with that? How does that what, give us some context for that? Thank you have uh, the Amy Van Andel branch coming and the it's going to be I'm thinking it's going to be around well it's over 20,000 square feet and so we are kind of getting ready to position ourselves so we can put a new collection in there and get all our technology in there and do all the things we need to do to make it snappy and make it right on day one. And if we tried to just do it in the year that it opens, it would be a huge financial hit for us. So we are kind of 
being very conscientious about that and, and holding some money back. So we're well positioned to deal with that new branch. We're going to be up uh, to 20 branches. Uh, when I started, we had 18. But what's true is that if you're doing great work and meet, you know something that's meaningful, people like to be a part of that. And so we're seeing, seeing growth. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't see any. Thank you again, Lance. Uh, and again, congratulations on that uh, outstanding award. First time in Michigan, is that right? Yes, yes, and my mom's librarian too, so it was uh, it was kind of cool to tell her. You know? I bet, I bet. Well, but, uh, I want to thank you all, and I want you to know that uh, you always have a friend in KDL, and uh, we really do appreciate your support and your friendship. And uh, thank you for all the work that you do. I know that it's hard. Being a public servant is uh, isn't a job for uh, for weenies. You know, it's, it takes some guts, and you probably don't hear it enough, but I. I understand and I really respect it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move then to our agenda item number six, which is public comment. And just a few uh, reminders on that. During public comment, we ask that speakers state their uh, name and address. Uh, as has been our practice in the past three years, comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Speakers will be notified at the two minute mark that they have one minute to complete their comment and will be told when the three minute period has been reached. A uh, person may address the board on matters or issues that are relevant to county government. Uh, I, as chair, may disallow public comment that is unduly repetitious, not relevant to county government, or regarding matters not under consideration by the board. We ask that speakers line up in the queue and, we, and that you wait your turn to come forward to address the commission. So uh, you may proceed. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Idalia Tinoco. I live in Kent County. Han pasado dos meses desde que comenzamos la campaña para finalizar el contrato de Kent County tiene con ICE. Durante estos dos meses hemos venido a todas las reuniones de la Comisión del Condado para exigir el final del contrato. Hemos distribuido una petición con más de 1,700 firmas. Hemos demostrado durante las celebraciones del 4 de julio, hemos visto, visitado sedes de la Comisión del Condado de Ken, presidente. Hemos realizado una concentración en la cárcel del Condado de Ken y nos hemos reunido con administradores, administradores del condado, comisionados y miembros del departamento del sheriff. La, re, la respuesta que seguimos recibiendo de los comisionados del condado es que no terminarán para contratar a ICE, el departamento del sheriff. Nos dice que están obligados por la ley a hacerlo. Sin embargo, numerosas ciudades y gobiernos de otros condados en todo el país han terminado su contrato con ICE. Los comisionados del condado no han dicho que no tienen el poder con lo que estamos completamente en desacuerdo. Además, los funcionarios del condado han descarca, descartado por completo la experiencia vivida de la comunidad de inmigran, inmigrantes, que está siendo aterrorizada por ICE. Los funcionarios del condado han escuchado directamente de la comunidad de inmigrantes, sobre todo cómo están siendo perjudicados por la violencia de ICE. Y se les ha presentado información sobre las llamadas semanales de Grand Rapids Response. Two minutes. Recibe de la comunidad de inmigrantes que han sido blanco de ICE. Por lo tanto, dejemos en claro a todos que continuaremos esta lucha para terminar el contrato. Continuaremos hablando en contra del daño que ICE está haciendo en nuestra comunidad. Continuaremos apoyando a las familias que están siendo separadas por ICE y nosotros seguiremos haciendo, asistiendo a las reuniones de las comisiones del condado hasta que se termine el contrato y el condado ya no sea cómplice de la violencia contra la comunidad de inmigrantes que está llevando a cabo ICE. Además, mi comunidad está aterrorizada por el... el por el, el gobierno ICE, que está cada vez separando familias eh, en contra. Minutes, 
en contra de la, de la, la comunidad hispana. Sabemos que muchos piensan que somos criminales y no lo somos. Habemos mucha gente honrada trabajando. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It has, been, it has been two months we began our campaign to end the contract with ICE. During those, pun, during those two months, we've come to every county commission meeting you know, to, demand, to demand an end to the contract. We have circulated a petition with over 1,700 signatures. We have demonstrated at the four, during 4th of July celebrations. We visited the home of the Kent County Commission Chairman. We've had a rally at the Kent County Jail. We have met, and we have met with county administrators, commissioners, and members of the Sheriff's Department. The answer, we keep, the answer we keep getting from county officials is that they will not end the contract with ICE. The Sheriff's Department told us they are obligated by law to, to do so, yet numerous cities and counties have already ended their contract with ICE. County commissioners have told us they do not have the power which we obviously disagree with. In addition, county officials have completely dismissed the lived experiences of the immigrant community, which is being terrorized by ICE. County officials have heard directly, directly from the effect from the immigrant community how they are being harmed by ICE violence, and they have been presented with information about the weekly calls that Grand Rapids Rapid Response receives from the immigrant community that has been targeted by ICE. Therefore, let us make it clear to everyone that we will continue the fight to end the contract. We will continue to speak out against the harm ICE is doing in our communities. And we will continue to support the families that are being separated by ICE. And, and we will continue to attend county commission meetings until the contract is terminated and the county is no longer complicit in the violence against the immigrant community that is being done by ICE. Could you uh, state your name for the record? Alex Kelly. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Denise Langwood. So you have heard from members of COSEJA and Rapid Response, and I would like to give my impression of the meeting that was held on August 6th. Mr. Talon promised a meeting that would be a working meeting to lay out a path forward. All of you expressed some sympathy and caring for the situation that is happening to our immigrant community. What that meeting was, was poorly attended it was time wasting. It accomplished nothing more than to insult and frustrate those in attendance as well as their supporters. What we did here was very encouraging testimony from Commissioner Walmack, supporting the immigrant community and urging his colleagues to do the same. Um, I would like to thank you, Commissioner. Standing up for your convictions and facing potential negative repercussions takes a lot of courage and I admire that. As for Commissioners Steck and Bukowski, Instead of helping or creating a path forward, you did nothing of value. Mr. Steck, you said you couldn't effectively sign the resolution because it would be just rubber stamping it because you did not know what the total impact would be for the entire Kent County if the ICE contract <coughs> was broken. You also reiterated the need for time to fully investigate this. I'm calling BS on that comment. You've had time to investigate. You had weeks. Asking for more time is the equivalent of saying, I don't care enough to devote the time and the energy to this issue to handle it in an urgent manner. You claim to care, but your actions are belying your words. Even more insulting was your excuse for not breaking the contract. You stated you have similar agreements in place with other counties. You said, how could I explain that, that I no longer honor the ICE contract? I cannot believe that your biggest concern is the opinion of other agencies. There's something you could do. You could stand up. You could tell them you're breaking the ICE contract because it's destroying the immigrant families in your communities. Two minutes. You could be, you could be honest with them and tell them you're not going to be complicit. In the past couple of months, nothing has been accomplished by the commissioner group as a whole. However, there are 19 of you, and it's easy to share blame for inaction with such a large number. So we should call out everybody for their individual complicity. There were 185 arrests last year. How many happened in East, each district? Do you know? Commissioner Ponstein, how many arrests happened in Wyoming? Commissioner Voorhees, do you know? Commissioner Talon, what about District 15? Do you know how many arrests occurred there? 
do you care? It is quite literally your job to know these things and what's going on in your neighborhoods. So I believe we need to understand which communities are being targeted the most. We've heard that breaking the contract would not effectively end what is happening, so this needs to be a two-pronged approach. You need to understand what's happening That's three in minutes. Thank you. each community, and we need to take some action, and we should follow up with each of you to make sure this occurs. Thank you. Any other public comment this morning? I'm not seeing any, so we will move to agenda item number seven, which is our consent agenda. Uh, before that, I am going to call on Vice Chair Bolter for a special motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would move to add an agenda item on the back of our agenda and make an 8G. We've got some contract negotiations to discuss some new, new information, so I move for a closed session item on 8G on the back of our agenda. Support. Okay, that's been. For adding an agenda item. Adding agenda item 8G, which is regarding to con regarding uh, union contract negotiations, will go into closed session for that. Okay. okay, that's been moved by Vice Chair Bolter, supported by Commissioner Corndike. Any questions on that? I see none. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. We then proceed with our uh, consent agenda, which is item number seven, and for that I will call on Commissioner Steck. Thank you, Chair. I would move approval of the consent agenda of today's date. Support. Support by Commissioner Voorhees. <laughs> Questions or comments on the consent agenda? I do not see any. This is a roll call vote. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the motion to adopt the consent agenda, Commissioner Antor. Yes. Vice Chair Bolter. <laughs> yes. Commissioners Breevy. Yes. Volkowski. Hennessy. Yes. Jones. Yes. Coleman. Corndike. Yes. Mast. Melton. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Ponstein. Yes. Skaggs. Yes. Steck. Yes. Talon. Yes. Vonk. Yes. Voorhees. Yes. Womack. Yes. Chair Salfeld. Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 16 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. The consent agenda is adopted. Thank you. We move then to agenda item number eight. Uh, we have uh, various resolutions, and for the first one, I will call on Commissioner Bonk. Thank you, Chair. I'll move resolution number 62 of today's day, Labor Agreement, Police Officers, Label Council, Captains, Lieutenants, and from Human Resources. Is there support? Support by Commissioner, was that Breedy? Okay. Uh, questions or comments on this item? I'm not seeing, oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Stack? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just one quick question. I wasn't quite sure on the uh, indication of the total five year increase to salary. Is that the cumulative number over five years or is that an annual number? Yes, it's cumulative. Any other questions? I do not see any. This is a roll call vote, so I will call on Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the motion to adopt resolution 8231862, Commissioner Antor. Yes. Vice Chair Bolter. Yes. Commissioner Breedy. Yes. Bolkowski. Hennessy. Yes. Jones. Yes. Coleman. Corndike. Yes. Mast. Melton. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Ponstein. Yes. Skaggs. Yes. Steck. Yes. Talon. Yes. Vonk. Yes. Voorhees. Yes. Womack. Yes. Chair Salfeld. Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 16 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. Resolution 823-1862 is adopted. Thank you. We move then to resolution, the second resolution, and for that I will call on Commissioner Skaggs. Thank you, Chair. I move resolution 63 of today's date, amendments to labor agreements. Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Association, Teamsters Local 214, and the Circuit Court Referee Association. Is there support? Support. Support by Commissioner Melton. Questions or comments on this resolution? I, I do not see any, and uh, it is a roll call vote, so I'll call on Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the motion to adopt Resolution 823-1863, Commissioner Antor. Yes. Vice Chair Bolter. Yes. Commissioners Breevy. Yes. Bolkowski. Hennessy. Yes. Jones. Yes. Coleman. Corndike. Yes. Mast. Melton. Yes. 
Morgan. Yes. Ponstein. Yes. Skaggs. Yes. Steck. Yes. Talon. Yes. Vonk. Yes. Voorhees. Yes. Womack. Yes. Chair Salfeld. Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 16 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. Resolution 823-1863 is adopted. Thank you. We move then to our third resolution, on, and I will call on Commissioner Melton. Support. Support by Commissioner Korndike. Questions or comments on this resolution? Commissioner Stack. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just a question again. I'm not quite sure what is the um, the rationale for the difference between uh, the 70 percent uh, contribution from Comstock Park and Sparta and 100 percent from KSD. Uh, why the difference? Uh, we had a lively discussion about that. In the what have you want Somebody to from the sheriff's office, please come forward. I'm not sure I heard the question. I apologize. My question was: uh, It indicates that 70 percent of the costs of this um, of the staff will be paid by Sparta and Comstock for theirs, but 100 percent by KSD. Why 100 percent for one and 70 percent for the others? Uh, the sharing agreement for cost for most of the school districts are based on the fact that we are the primary responding agency for law enforcement calls in that in that area. It's a little bit different with Kent KSD because their physical campus is located in the city of Grand Rapids. Their school resource officer program will also look quite a bit different than the rest of the school resource officers because there's a substantial amount of truancy. Um, as part of that mission. So they're going to be going out and um, following up with students who have a truancy issue and, a fa and families. So the program is a little bit different. It most closely fits with our school resource officer program than any of our other programs. But I would say it's more of a blend between a community police and school resource. As a follow up, so do we, um, do we size this differently depending upon the negotiations and what services? So it's not like all the schools. Uh, Pay seventy percent, and well, except for this, this particular position, all the rest of the schools have paid seventy percent. That being said, as um, we do continue to talk to different school districts, um, our approach will be, for example, if a school district wants additional school resource officers, the seventy percent is only going to be for the first school resource officer. Any additionals will be at one hundred percent. Um, and if there's something that is kind of outside of the, the normal mission of the school resource officer, then we'll evaluate that program individually. But that's kind of how we have it set up right now. I'm just a little concerned. It's, it's all, all treated the, equitably across the board. Yeah, and that's one of the things we're trying to evaluate. But again, because this is a little bit more of a blend between a school resource officer and a community police program, our community police officers are all charged at 100%. So um, that's, that's what we thought would be the best alignment in this context. I have a point of order. You're asking questions on what is resolution 8E, and we are on actually 8C. So I will uh, I let you go because I figured <laughs> that takes care of the questions yeah. when we're on that resolution. Okay. But, uh, but to clarify the matter for everybody, we are on uh, resolution 8C at the present time. So are there any other questions on item 8C? I don't see any. This is a roll call vote. I will call on Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the motion to adopt Resolution 823-1864, Commissioner Antor. Yes. Vice Chair Bolter. Yes. Commissioners Breevy. Yes. Bolkowski. Hennessy. Yes. Jones. Yes. Coleman. Corndike. Yes. Mast. Melton. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Ponstein. Yes. Skaggs. Yes. Steck. Still yes. <laughs> Talon. Yes. Vonk. Yes. Voorhees. Yes. Womack. Yes. Chair Salfeld. Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 16 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. Resolution 823-1864 is adopted. Thank you. We move then to agenda, or I'm sorry, resolution uh, number four, and I will call on Commissioner Melton again.
support by Commissioner Breedy. Questions or comments on this resolution? Commissioner Talon. Thank you, Chair Salvo. I wasn't able to uh, uh, see the minutes or see the Finance Committee meeting. I think this was just discussed on Tuesday. It's not clear to me. Uh, I'm wondering if someone can explain who actually pays this fee. Is it uh, a police department? Uh, is it the Sheriff's Department? Or is it a citizen that pays it? Um, most, of the, most of the time it's the defense attorneys that come in um, paying that we send invoices to for the police reports. Um, on occasion we have people who represent themselves that come in that would have to pay the fee. Um, but for a majority of the cases it's most likely defense counsel. Right. Go ahead. Just follow up. I'm curious about whether there's a, a disparate impact to people who aren't able to pay this. There are people for whom uh, $20 don't want to do is reduce um, people's willingness to report crimes. Um, so I'm wondering if you could talk about that. Um, has that been discussed or did it get discussed at the meeting? Maybe I'm not sure I didn't quite understand the question. Like, are you saying that how, how it would impact the families as far as um, if they have to pay for that fee for the police report? Yeah. I mean, can everybody pay that $20? Um, so if individuals are required to pay it and they're, and they're not able to, does that mean that they can't file a report? That, that's not clear to me. No, typically all of our cases come to us after they've already been filed. So the, the case has already been filed, it's already been charged. That shouldn't affect whether the case actually comes to our office or not. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Stack. Thank you, Chair. I think it's on this motion. Um, <laughs> um, can, can copies of the reports uh, be obtained from the police department as well? Yes. Okay. So they don't have to go through your office. They can go right to the police department. And do you know what the police department charges to get these? I couldn't tell you exactly okay. what the police department charges. I don't know um, if they, most of the time because the, de um, the defense counsel deals with our office, we're the ones that pr provide that information to them. But there are other recourses, I believe. So, yeah. I'm sorry, what was I that? I believe there are other recourses to get those reports if they want them. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Commissioner Skaggs. Um, so we're really handing out CDs and DVDs to people still? Yeah, so um, it depends on how the evidence is provided to us. So if it's provided to us on a CD, then we just um, basically copy it to a CD or a DVD. Sometimes we, if the evidence is big enough, we can copy it to a flash drive. And this would be evidence that we Um, some agencies, uh, particularly GRPD, have some of their evidence um, online, so we can actually share it via email. Um, but most agencies, we get most of the evidence on digital media. So ultimately, um, for time savings, we end up having to copy them to exactly in, exactly in the form that we receive them in. Um, it, it would kind of be a waste of time for us to put it on um, computers and then copy it again onto something else. So. I guess I don't really Because that's the, we basically right now, the way that we have it, we have a C, uh, duplicator in our office. So if we receive a CD from an agency, the fastest way for us to duplicate it is to put, put a CD in there and then put a blank CD in with it and it, it'll copy it within minutes and then we can just uh, give it to the council. Otherwise, we'd have to wait for it to download on the computer and then email it. Um, it's just that's the fastest way for us to do it time wise. Okay, I don't see any other questions. This is not a roll call vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Resolution passes. We uh, move then to our fifth resolution, uh, and I will call on Commissioner Korndike. Thank you, Chair. I would like to move Resolution 66 of today's date to add three school resource officer positions for Comstock Park, Sparta, and the Ken ISD. And there's support by Commissioner Morgan. We already have had some questions answered on this. Are there any other questions regarding this resolution? Commissioner Morgan. Just uh, what I understand of this uh, with the Kent 
ISD is it's in the city of Grand Rapids, but the city of Grand Rapids could do this, but they're going to the county to do this <laughs> for their contract, correct? Correct. Because there are some countywide issues with jurisdiction, we're the best agency to participate but with they're it. They're coming to you and asking right. you to correct. provide the service, correct. is what I'm getting to. And I love my cell phone up there, so. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, I don't see any. This is a roll call vote, so I will call on Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chair on the motion to adopt resolution 8231866, Commissioner Antor. Yes. Vice Chair Bolter. Yes. Commissioners Breevy. Yes. Bolkowski. Yes. Hennessy. Yes. Jones. Yes. Coleman. Corndike. Yes. Mast. Melton. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Ponstein. Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Steck? Yes. Talon? Yes. Bonk? Yes. Voorhees? Yes. Womack? Yes. Chair Saalfeld? Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 16 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. Resolution 8, 23, 18, 66 is adopted. Thank you. We move to our next resolution, and I will call on Commissioner Bonk. Thank you, Chair. I'll move resolution 67 of today's date. Add three road patrol officers for Byron Township from the Sheriff's Department. Support. Support by Commissioner Voorhees. Uh, <coughs> questions or comments on this resolution? Commissioner Skaggs. Um, well, I appreciate that. I, th I believe the township is uh, is paying for 88 percent of this uh, of this new addition of service. I do believe that um, the sheriff should. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Ponstein. Thank you, Chair Stoltham. I also want to point out, though, we are not getting full reimbursement. There is a benefit to the county as a whole by adding these police officers. If there's an emergency within the county, we can recall these officers into other areas of counties, and I think that's a huge beneficial factor. Also, where these deputies are going to be assigned are normally places with high volume high attractions. People from across the county go into that area, and I think there's a benefit to them by having these officers there, too. Any other comments or questions? I would just add, too, the county's grown significantly in the last several years, which is a good thing. And as you grow, you need more support in areas like this. So with that, we will uh, vote on it. It is not a roll call vote. So all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passes. We move then to uh, resolution, uh, the, the final resolution, 8G. And I will call on Vice Chair Bolter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move item, new item 8G of 823.18 of today's of today's date, I guess. Support. And, and that is to go into closed session. To go into closed session. I'm sorry. And I have a script. I move to meet to close session in accordance with MCLA section 15.268C to develop a strategic course of action relative to the county's negotiations of collective bargaining agreement. Okay, and we got support by <laughs> Commissioner Corndike. I believe this requires a roll call vote, so I will call on Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the motion to enter into closed session to discuss collective bargaining strategies, Commissioners Antor. Yes. Vice Chair Bolter. Yes. Commissioners Breevy. Yes. Bolkowski. Hennessy. Yes. Jones. Yes. Coleman. Corndike. Yes. Mast. Melton. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Ponstein. Skaggs? Yes. Steck? Yes. Talon? Yes. Vonk? Yes. Voorhees? Yes. Womack? Yes. Chair Salfeld? Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 16 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. You will enter into closed session. 
Okay, thank you. We'll pause while we, while we uh, clear the uh, commission area. Thank you. Okay, we uh, are back in uh, regular session and we are up to agenda item number nine, which is our one minute public comment period for anything uh, else that there might be public comment on. Is there any public comment today? I do not see any, so we will move then to no item. Wait, Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, you uh, please state your name and address, same rules as before, one minute. Buenos días, mi nombre es Gemma Loy, y vivo aquí en Kent County. Queremos a uh, todos nosotros de la comunidad que el, para la próxima junta pongan en su, en su agenda terminar el contrato. My name is Gemma Loy, and I live here in Kent County, and we, uh, the people, want for you to put in your agenda next meeting and the contract with ICE. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? I'm not seeing any, so we move then to agenda item number nine, I'm sorry, 10, which is our reports. And for the start of that, I will call on Commissioner Korndike. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to report that uh, the Gerald R. Ford International Airport grew at a 16 Point seven percent uh, growth rate month over month year over year from 2017. We are now the second fastest growing airport in the United States of America. We continue to work on uh, getting a new air traffic control tower, and we're working on our plans for a federal inspection station. Thank you. Thank you. Good news. Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to report that the Grand Valley Metro Council will be looking at their budget on September 6th. So if you had any input or thoughts on that, please let me know. Thank you. Thank well, Commissioner Hennessy. Thank you. Commissioner Ponstein. Thank you, Just a couple quick things. The, the pension board was mentioned here briefly. Uh, we had a meeting last week. Uh, most of the meeting time, a lot's a lot of time is de dedicated to the managers. We hired a manager money. Uh, we got Wells Fargo in. Uh, I've been kind of an outspoken, sometimes a critic of Wells Fargo uh, for their activities in the retail sector. Uh, we've been, or I was informed that they were completely separate entities. Uh, and did, I just want to make the point that it seems like every few months there's always something new about Wells Fargo. I just don't want the bond to come that's also within the pension division. Uh, the, one, the one point I want to make about the pension board is we are an actively managed pension. And there can be a lot of critics about pensions and their costs. I think one thing that uh, I've read and I've heard is that actively managed pensions versus an individual doing their own retirement planning, 2 to 4 percent better return on an active take that over a term of your retirement savings, uh, that's going to add up quickly. Um, more so, what's disturbing on the other end is that current stats show that 47% of Americans now have less than $10,000, which includes the 401 and the IRA dedicated to their retirement upon retirement. Now, we can argue all day pensions versus that, but this is going to be a social problem that's going to reoccur 30, 40 years down the road when these people go to retire and all they've got to live on is their Social Security. Uh, also, I want to—I was at the pre-session, the executive meeting, and I, I welcome the inquiry from the county about the land bank. There's a lot of misconceptions out there. Uh, the first things I, that, that I want to address is just the word blight that's thrown out there. We always assume that blight is, has to do with a home. If you go to Webster's Dictionary, blight is described as an ugly, neglected, or rundown condition of an urban area. And our current projects are at the request of the city of Grand Rapids. Now, we were told that we can no longer take tax foreclosed properties, which I was more than happy to do, because that was most of the critics that, are, that have been coming after me cite time and time again. But the city of Grand Rapids had another problem, and that was the amount of vacant properties that are in their possession, and what are we going to do to dispose of those? Our, our land bank came up with the idea, partnered with Champion Homes, to try to find a quicker way to get these vacant homes off their roads and get a home, single-family home, 
on them for people to live in and make it a taxable property. Now, people easily say that, well, the builder could do that. Well, the builders aren't out there because those vacant properties have been available for some time. And for a builder to build a home that's three to four months in the margin that the city of Grand Rapids wants, they want it on the uh, average medium income price range. There's a lot of builders that don't want to build in that zone because there's not a lot of profit. The profit for builders are in three, four hundred thousand dollar homes. Those aren't really affordable homes in the city of Grand Rapids. Um, there's there's also a misconception, you know, that we're throwing modular homes on there. Well, modular homes are those things you see coming down the highway. They pull up onto a, a concrete pad. They're hammered together and they're up in a day. Uh, champion homes develop manufactured homes. Uh, there is a big difference. The home is designed off-site and then delivered and assembled. It normally takes about three weeks to get the home on the lot, assembled, and ready for occupancy. Uh, the homes that, are, that the land bank are involved in have a foundation, they have a basement, they have full utilities. So there's a big difference and that needs to be clarified in the future. One of the other things that have come up is why are we working in Muskegon County? And I guess this is the one that takes me back the most is that uh, when we came up with this project to pilot in Grand Rapids, we didn't say we were going to do it for all 70. We took four vacant lots and said, let's try it, let's see how it works. Well, we've got the eye of the state land bank and Governor Snyder. Uh, there are other areas in the state that have far more uh, vacant lots than the city of Grand Rapids. And a lot of the land banks, they are just banking and holding them. Uh, that's not something that the governor wants to see, and that's not something that the state land bank wants to see. So we're involved in Muskegon at the request of the governor and the state land bank to pilot a program there. So to have an organization within our county that's using best practices and people that don't uh, that, that take a note and want to expand this to the other parts of the state, I would think that that would be more than welcome. I mean, we could look at other organizations, the right place, on how they're partnering with other things and doing our best practices and passing them on. As always, the land bank's always open. The office is there. Dave Allen is more than willing to sit down and talk to the county commissioner. I know Ken Parrish is also that same way. I think me and Ken are both on the record. If uh, the land bank is no longer needed, we'll be the first to say that we should eliminate that. But I welcome the by the county on this issue and uh, hope for some meaningful dialogue on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports? Commissioner Talon. Thank you, Chair. Just quickly, it, it seems like it's been a long time since the last Grand Rapids DDA meeting, which we usually have a meeting right after it. But the primary agenda back then was uh, an overview of where the planning is for. Uh, the out-of-water development along the Grand River, there's a, a process in place for that, and there's lots of information out there uh, from the media about that, and uh, I won't cover all that here, but you can check that out uh, on MLive and in uh, yeah, some of the TV coverage. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports? Commissioner Steck. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a couple of reports. Uh, at the last meeting of Network 180 Board, a resolution was approved to appoint and designate a search committee to uh, proceed to identify and recommend a new CEO for Network 180. So that is just at the thresholds of beginning and uh, projected to take, I think, through March or April or even May of next year. And then with respect to the Lakeshore Regional Entity, uh, we are deep into contract negotiations with, behavior, with Beacon Behavioral Health and still project that we will have a final recommended contract for those services in the next two weeks. Any other reports? I do not. Oh, Mr. Bonstein. Because the, the good news about the pension board, I, I brushed by and just let the bad news go there. Uh, yes, we have $900 million. Approaching that one billion mark, which is a huge mark. But as a pension board member, the thing when I go to conferences, being with other pension board members or other counties, they are at in awe of what we have done. We are currently 104% fully funded. Uh, there are pension boards in this state that are less than 50%. This isn't something I did, it's something that's been built into the system. 
we're not a system that goes after the high profit right off the bat or in the market and try to get a good deal. We have a plan that protects us on the downsize and we benefit from the upside. We don't get all of it, but we certainly don't really lose it all. And that's a philosophy that's been attacked long before I was there. So I just wanted to add that good news to the mix. And as the other member of the pension board, I'll add that our, our uh, consultant, ACG, is who we've had for, gosh, 20-plus years, is outstanding, and, and they have a lot to do with why that number is at 104%. So very good. Did Commissioner Morgan? Oh, okay. All right. We'll move then to miscellaneous. I will call on Vice Chair Bolter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a couple of items. Uh, the first one, kind of a somber item. I wanted to just mention Drs. Eric and Marcy Larson. They are community members in my district, um, touch a lot of lives. They're both doctors, pediatrician and anesthesiologist, and they tragically lost their son last week on an accident on 131 as a family. They were all together, and, and he ended up, um, their son Andy died on the scene. So I want to keep them in our thoughts and prayers um, as they continue to cope with that. Um, on a business front, uh, we the Sheriff's Appointment Committee did meet on August 14th. They are taking applications um, to replace our sheriff. Uh, the, they are due on Wednesday, September 19th. You need to submit them to the clerk. So I'm sure all of that information is on the website as well, but just wanted to mention that. And then lastly, I wanted to acknowledge our county clerk for being selected as a lieutenant governor candidate for this upcoming election. We're very fortunate. Woo. Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A um, couple of things. Um, a few years, well, years ago, we did a cost uh, benefit allocation between the urban and non urban areas in the county, and I was wondering if we could pull that out again for the newer commissioners uh, because it covered not only public safety but the uh, human services and where those costs are going so it can give us an idea where our tax dollars are going. Uh, second thing is, the reason I brought up the, the pension board is I, I sat on that during the recession and uh, we were trying to get really defensive like uh, Stan was alluding to. And it's a, it, that board is a lot of work and uh, I just appreciate their efforts and it's nice to have it fully funded because uh, when I had the opportunity to serve on that with Commissioner Voorhees, uh, we were getting pretty defensive. Uh, but we had that uh, nimbleness to do that. So. Um, I just want to, you know, congratulate them on their hard work because it is, it's a busy committee. So, just wanted to do a little shout out. Thank you. Commissioner Antor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to uh, give my support for Sheriff Stelma and his contract with ICE. Um, you know, for the last couple of meetings, we've had a group coming in here and talking about, they're, they're providing us with a narrative that, that is just absolutely incorrect. And, you know, it's going back and looking at when we, the last several years of detainees, um, and back in 2014, we had 152, okay? Right now we're at 87. And it's been trending below 100 um, ever since 2014. I just want to remind everybody that President Obama was in office back then, and this, these separations, they didn't start with this administration. They started with previous administrations, and there was no ink on that. Nobody was talking about it because well, I don't want to get into the death of American journalism, but um, it just seems to be the thing to do right now. And I'm looking at this plea to address the fact that these kids are being ripped out of their parents' hands, um, that they're being pulled over or being thrown in jail for not having a license or ID. That's just simply not correct. Um, one of the ladies asked, what's going on in your district? We've had one person arrested up in Sparta, and it was uh, for assault with intent to commit a felony. But looking down the list of the reasons why ICE are making these arrests, we've got operating while intoxicated, fraud, the assault to intent uh, or intent to commit a felony. We've got assault and attempt, and then it says PO after. I'm not sure what that means. Person, I'm not sure about that one, but we have assault 
strangulation, we got retail fraud, second degree, we got breaking and entering, identity theft, domestic assault, CSC, crim criminal sexual conduct, second degree, assault with dangerous weapon, interfering with 911, uh, OWI, which is operating while intoxicated, hit and run, personal damage. There's a, there's a ton of these in here, and they don't fit the narrative. And this is public information, and I wish someone would go get that information. So I don't know why we want to award bad behavior by not lodging people. It makes no sense. In other words, because you're an illegal alien, we're going to overlook all the crimes you're committing. That doesn't make sense anywhere, unless we're talking about the bizarro world. We've got a couple cases, two young women that were killed, um, just two of many, but the last two, one in uh, San Francisco and one in Iowa just recently by illegal aliens. Um, you know, that should be what we're protesting. This doesn't make any sense to me. And to continue to allow people to come in and disrupt our meetings, turning their backs to us, people in the back of the room can't see because they're standing in their way. How about some civility? How about addressing these issues? How about being honest with the public? I got a letter from a retired clergy who's ripping me because I'm, in effect, ripping kids out of parents' hands. And I think we all probably got the letters. Um, he's citing Bethany Christian Services, a quote from the CEO saying how terrible this is. Well, that quote was pertaining to what was happening down on the border. And I contacted <coughs> Bethany Christian Services, the regional director up here, and she said, no, absolutely. These people should be incarcerated for crimes. We do not support overlooking this. So it's just really important. If we're going to have these discussions and go through this continual act, it's like a circus. It doesn't fit the actual truth. If you got specific cases where you want to bring up where the police officer pulls somebody over, they couldn't, you know, for, for no reason whatsoever, let's talk about those. But even then, I used to be a police officer. If you can't provide ID, we can't tell what you've done in the past, okay? I used to run file checks all the time on people. You pull them over, you get their ID, you run a real quick file check. You see if there's a warrant. That's good police work. I want police officers to do good police work. That's it. Why not? Why would we want to release dangerous people that we had there because we were being politically incorrect? We don't want to run a file check on him because of the color of his skin. I, I worked in Sparta. Everybody I pulled over was white. I ran file checks on all of them. Sometimes we got a, you know, a hit, an arrest, wh whatever it was, and you process it. So if we're going to keep tolerating this every week, now today was very civil, which is great. I hope we can continue to keep that. But I want to at least get the facts out there. And i got to credit Sheriff Stellman and his staff for not making this public. He did it for a reason, because he didn't want to make the situation worse perhaps, you know, kind of let it die out. But I wanted to point this out. This is just me. This is not, I don't re represent the entire board, but I wanted to bring these things out. The lists are there. You can get them from ICE. You can get them from the Sheriff's Department. Find out what these crimes are for, okay? They're not pulling people over and taking them in because they're illegal. They don't know. I, I live in Sparta, Michigan. I am surrounded by migrant camps my whole life. These people are the hardest working people on the face of the earth. They come in, there's absolutely no problems with them. They come in, they do their job, they raise their families here. And if you get behind a, a truck or a car that they're driving, they go really, really slow. Because to be honest with you, most of them are undocumented. I've talked to the local fruit growers, but they come in, they do their job, and they go home. And people don't harass them. And uh, I, I worked alongside of them when I was a kid. Couldn't keep up with them. Amazingly hard working people. And so I just wanted to point that out, and uh, hopefully we can um, bring a little bit of reality back in the dis this discussion. And also the fact that um, our president um, did file an executive order that made separating kids at the border. You, you can no longer do that. He did it months ago. Of course, we don't talk about that. So um, that's it. I appreciate your time. Okay. Commissioner Ponstein. Thank you, Chair Southfeld. This will be just brief. I was at the MAC conference this uh, past weekend. I was joined by Commissioner Jim Talon. Uh, the big item on there was the redo of the bylaws. And unfortunately, they did not pass. Uh, there was one section in there in order to change it at the last minute without prior approval. He had a two thirds vote. Uh, the group that was backing the uh, not to have the 
expansion of the MAC board uh, lost by about five votes. What they quickly realized, though, is to pass the whole bylaws, you only need a simple majority. They had the votes to kill it off. Uh, the only drawback, which does affect me, and hopefully we can get it corrected, is that the word term of a MAC director is not really defined. So when I started mine filling in for four months on someone else's term, that's a term that's going to be used against my two terms. So technically, I've been on the board for a year and a half, and in two years I'll be off. So hopefully they'll get that uh, straightened out. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, one of the areas that represent uh, and attend these conferences are Region 3, which Kent County is part of. We are well represented on the back board. Our, our region has four reps. That's probably the most you can have without having one single to you. Uh, we're represented by Phil Kyers from Ottawa County. He serves as one of the Region 3 reps. Jeff Story from Allegan County is also one of our reps. And like I, we also uh, added Julie Rogers to another at-large seat on the MAC board. Uh, we're responsible technically for rep representing all 83 county. Julie's from Kalamazoo County. Just want to clear that uh, you know I don't put partisan stuff on, on on the MAC board. We serve all the counties. Julie is a Democrat from Kalamazoo. I supported her from day one. Uh, she's very active in, in, in the MAC uh, committees. She's very active on the federal level with NACO, so I'd like to welcome her onto the board. Uh, we're well represented on the MAC board, and uh, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Talon. Thank you, sir. In my 18 years on this commission, I haven't heard a public comment in a language other than English, and I'm so we, there's kind of a new thing there. I'm wondering if I could ask that that comment be translated into English and provided to the, the board so we can, so those of us that don't speak Spanish can know what the person said. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Chair. I also sit on the Kent County Parks Foundation Board and I wanted to let everyone know that on September 12th there is a tribute to Peter Sehia for the upcoming fundraiser for Something's Grilling. So if you like more information on that, just let me know and I'll make sure you get an invite and it's also out there on the World Wide Web. But please uh, consider uh, participating and buying a ticket for that event and attending. So uh, I will be there. Thanks. And since you brought that up, I'm going to butt in order here. And one of my um, announcements was you should have all received one of these cards in your box. Uh, regarding save the date after the next board meeting uh, we would like to get it, all of us if we can to take a tour of Millennium Park uh, take a look at what's going on there and we're gonna this is all being hosted by Ambassador Peter Secchia and he is working on both transportation and providing a lunch as part of that uh, more details will follow but as you can see on that note we are asking that you RSVP to Pam by Friday, September 7th. Uh, again, that would be next meeting, next uh, board meeting right after that. So hope to see you all at that. I will go back in order here and go to Commissioner Voorhees. Uh, as Stan was mentioning about uh, uh, MAC, we have a group called the SMART Group. And um, that stands for Southwest Michigan Alliance of Region 3, 14 counties. We get together uh, every third month. And uh, last month, or this month, we were out to uh, Ionia County. But we, we just share practices. And they always, uh, they love to come to Kent County because we've always uh, had some very interesting uh, times of, of things that we'd visit and do. So I will be requesting that we might host them again coming up uh, uh, probably the first part of 2019. But um, that is, as Stan said, why Region 3, I think, is, is very impactful of ideas uh, and uh, of uh, progress for county government. And uh, SMART is a, is a part of that. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Womack. Yes, I just would like to state that our Hispanic community does not have a commissioner on the Kent County Commission. I don't believe that there is a commissioner on the city of Grand Rapids or many of the 
townships where they have someone that can speak or represent them. And it just seems to be a language barrier, and it's not the language barrier between Spanish and English, because even when they're speaking English, I seem to take away a different um, viewpoint on what's being said, and that's not taking either side on the ICE contract. But I do believe that um, I didn't hear them say they want people released from jail that are felons or people that are committing crimes and some of the meetings that we've had uh, I do agree with uh, Commissioner Antor that we definitely when we have people within these chambers they have to follow the rules and sometimes those rules have been broken but it's getting better and we do have a responsibility to a address those issues and teach people the rules their first time coming here so I do agree with him on some of that, but I did not hear them say that they wanted to uh, release people that committed crimes. And I don't think we've had enough time to sit down with them and really find out what they're truly asking. And I think Matt did a great job with the meeting that he brought forth. Um, some people think that meeting went wrong, but I think that was the frustration of finally having a chance to talk and it was also a learning period because I also was insulted when someone said, can they prove uh, racial profiling? And I haven't been invited back to any of the meetings, uh, not Matt's meeting, was, which was discontinued. Um, I don't think it should have been discontinued. Um, I, I did attend the two o'clock meeting that Jim Talent uh, brought forth, but in the final notes, my comments wasn't included. It wasn't included that I attended that meeting. New commissioners have been asked to come to this meeting as it continues. I was asked not, to, I was not asked to come to that meeting. So being the only minority on this board of 19, I believe that my voice has been ostracized. I believe that the white privilege of giving a comment, you associate it quickly with logic reasoning, experience, history, and I believe some of my comments were viewed as emotional or he's a minority, um, emphasizing with another minority. So I was totally insulted that I wasn't invited back to uh, the two o'clock meeting or none of my comments at the two o'clock meeting um, were noted when I, find, when I saw the final notes. And, um, one day uh, at the city commission years ago, I heard Mayor Hartwell say he would give up his job for his fight during civil rights. And um, when I looked at some of the comments I made that became controversial, I understood that there's a lot of risk, but I didn't understand until later. Um, commissioners that I've had great um, friendship with, conversations with, on both sides of the boards, whether Democrat or Republicans, uh, those conversations are dwindling. Um, I think we should be able to stay as colleagues, comrades, and it would be unrealistic for us to think we would agree on every subject. But I do apologize if any time I had insulted anybody by um, giving my opinion about racial profiling. Um, and I do continue to say I'm on, a, I'm on a board with a great, great group of commissioners. But the only way we are going to learn, and I'm learning a lot, I don't want anyone to think that things that I have heard have just went over my head. I'm getting a better understanding of why we do have the ICE contract. Um, but at the same time, I hope this commission gets a better understanding on why so many people would come and ask for this contract to be uh, dissolved. Because whether we dissolve it or not, I think it's the beginning of the iceberg uh, looking into the Hispanic community and seeing how much they need a voice, how much we need to understand that this taxpaying members of our society, uh, when we talk about the illegal aliens or immigrants um, and people say that they're not citizens, that's true, but we have a lot of people who are coming here that are taxpayers, and they feel that this is infringing upon their rights and their pursuit of happiness in America. And 
we definitely need to listen to them at least and um, do whatever we can to make sure that they feel that they are just as American as everybody else. Just my opinion, and thank you for listening. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? I don't see any from miscellaneous, so we will move to agenda item number 12, and I will call on Commissioner Steck. Thank you, Chair. I would move to adjourn subject to the call of the Chair to Thursday, September 13, 2018. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Good work. I am Kent County. I am Kent County. I am Kent County. We are 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 Kent County. Kent County. Ami, Kent County. Somos Kent County. Mas Ira, Kent County. We are Kent County. We are Kent County. We are Kent County. Oh yeah.